Welcome to another episode of Call to Marriage. I am one half of this duo. (laughs) My name is Marcia. My name is Thomas. And today we are following up on the last podcast that we did. By the way, this is the first podcast that we are attempting to actually publish by video. So if you're not aware that we have a podcast and you're watching by video, you can find it on all places where you can find podcasts. It's called Call to Marriage. And we talk about, yeah, marriage. (laughs) (laughs) Our marriage. (laughs) Our marriage and the testimonies. Yeah, the testimonies of God in our lives. Right. So today's episode is a follow-up of the last episode that we published on our podcast where we talked about Uh, saying goodbye to China after four happy years full of unexpected blessing. And now we are down to our final days with less than a week to go, actually exactly a week to go around this time. Let's see, what time is it? 9.30. Around this time, we will be boarding a plane Yep, to head to San Francisco and then to Boston. Um. So with a few short days left, we want to explore what the past few weeks have been like and what we we also have ahead and recognizing God's hand upon our lives in all this time. Right. So I would start by saying it hasn't been easy to plan going home. Of course, the first thing you probably need is a flight, because if you don't have a flight, how are you going to get home, right? So the first thing to figure out is the travel, then you can plan your packing and everything else accordingly. Well, we bought a ticket. The ticket was canceled. And then, Hmm. and we bought it at a pretty affordable price. It was canceled, and then we had to figure out where to go from there. It was canceled rather unexpectedly, but with it wasn't too short notice, but it was enough of an inconvenience, and we had to figure out what to do next. So from there, we bought another flight, but we bought it through Hong Kong thinking that we'd better try a different route because the whole issue was having to do with U.S. and China bilateral travel agreements, not necessarily because the pandemic was so, um, what's the word, dangerous. I mm. mean, things had have subsided considerably in China, and that was before the second wave started flaring up in America. So it was a good time to travel, but it had everything to do with agreements between the two countries. So we thought, well, maybe we'll try going through Hong Kong, but what we realized is transiting through a uh, third country is complicated. Very after, complicated. Mm-hmm. So after making several phone calls, we came to the realization that traveling through Hong Kong specifically wasn't going to be able to happen. So we begged for a refund, which they did give us. And then we tried to see if there was any possibility of transiting anywhere else or which flights would be certain to fly because the the questions of uncertainty were troubling us. So the second flight was more expensive than the first. And the third flight, which is the flight we're going to use now through Shanghai to San Francisco that I mentioned earlier, is more expensive than the first two, (laughs) which leads me to my first testimony. (laughs) Number one. (laughs) So I say all that to say it's disheartening to pay you know, twice in some other people's cases, three times the price that you would normally pay for a particular route that you're Mm. accustomed to flying, um, especially when you don't have a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. But even though there was a lot of turmoil in having to buy all these different flights and dealing with the refunds, that's another story. The refunds of such expensive flights and how they delay. And I mean, who has enough money? Late to give. Exactly. (laughs) Quick to take, late to give. So, in fact, even though it was a huge hassle and overwhelming or a little bit stressful at times, 
Well, number one, we chose to trust God, even through the bit of stress. We didn't let it stress us out too much. And number two, we became grateful. <laughs> I wouldn't have been grateful for a flight home that cost twice the original price that I am accustomed to paying and that I even had in my hands before the flight got canceled. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel grateful. But in light of everything going on, in light of prices I saw, that could have been much worse than what we paid. Right. I feel extremely grateful to God. I think he he took us through that just to let us understand that he's with us and things could be worse. And so we're thankful for for that. We're thankful for our family support. We're thankful to God. And uh, now we have a flight that hopefully sticks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you said it right. We... We're thankful that's <laughs> as short as it can get. Um, we've seen people who are still stuck in different places who have no hopes of going to their homes or traveling to where they want to be. I just finished school here in China, and there are still students here whose countries don't even have flights available to leave from China here. and. Even if they could make a transit through another country, there are no flights really going to their home countries now. I don't know if the situation has changed, but um, a lot of students find themselves in that condition. And so when you think about it, you it makes you, you know, it leaves you wondering, well, what makes me different? I could have easily been one of those students. So now they have to, find another another alternative to be here in China by any means and it's that's not easy and so we just want to thank God and things have been working together for our good I think that scripture <laughs> Romans 8 has come alive in our lives and we can see that I just received I wasn't the way things were going I wasn't I guess I should label that as testimony number two <laughs> the sequence of things Yes, we had the delays, but after the delay, in these waiting times, how things, the layers of things that we've seen in our lives, um, we didn't necessarily plan for them. Like I wasn't expecting, my school was being very slow, so I wasn't expecting to get my degree, my certificates and paperwork sorted out before leaving. And if we had left at the initial times where we got the flight, I would still have to had um I would still have to work with my school concerning my paperwork, my documents, my certificates. To and that would be a hassle. More being in China here isn't easy. So you can imagine being outside China and trying to get in touch with them, different time zones. It's it was going to be another hassle, but it it feels as though God is just kept us here to, you know, usher us out peacefully. And we don't have to look back because we're not leaving anything here. So we can just go home peacefully and know that we are exiting China. But before we were leaving with a lot of uncertainties, but now I just received my paperwork and everything, certificates from my school yesterday. And it's just wonderful. I just have God to thank. And I wasn't expecting it, to be honest. I wasn't expecting them to send it to me. And the way and manner in which they called me, I just told them I'm, I'm leaving China. And they humbly asked, what can we do to help you? What do you need? <laughs> and I just told them I'm going to need my certificates and everything ready, my transcripts. I don't, I don't want to be working on this when I leave. And they said, okay, give us your address and they just sent it to me and I just thank I'm entitled to it yes but given the present circumstances um, you can't really fault authorities for delaying on certain things because th nothing is normal but I just want to thank God so that's testimony number two what's number three babe <laughs> <laughs> so that was this week he received all those um his degree his degrees, you know, they made <laughs> multiple copies in Chinese and English, etc. cetera. Um, and in this same week, I also 
um, was meant to wrap up school. Actually, I did wrap up the semester at work. So literally today, like a few hours ago. <laughs> um, and that's a testimony, you know, in the original time we were supposed to leave, uh, I was looking forward to it because it was earlier than the semester. So we were going to get to go home early, which is great. All of our families looking forward to seeing us. We were excited. However, I would have still had a few weeks of school left to manage. Yeah. And um, dealing with that at home, I don't know what to, ex I don't know. I didn't know what I would meet g going home. I couldn't have been certain that things would be smooth. Even the travel, you know, it should take a day or two, but with everything going on, who's to say it wouldn't have delayed? I don't know what would have happened exactly. Yeah. But now, regardless of any delays or anything, I, there's no real pressure because now I'm done with school. So I can travel lightly, you know, mentally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I praise God for that because... Um, yeah, because I'm finished and school, you know, the, the work was stressful on me. So I'm glad to be done. I praise God to have one less thing to worry about. And yeah. now we can pack our things. We have a few extra days. We're leaving on Monday. And today's Thursday. So we have a few days to finish packing without any anything hanging over our heads. Right. The only job here is to pack. That's the joy. Yeah. You know, it's hectic to leave but not leave. Mm -hmm. And you're going into a different time zone and it, it was just going to be another hurdle to jump over. But God has taken all of that off and now we can rest. We can go and then restart, rest without having to look, without looking back to say, oh, we should have done this. This is still pending. That is still pending. We, we're not going to worry about that anymore. Yeah. And so we thank God. Delays, like they say, are not denials. The flights got canceled. We had to wait patiently. We cried out for God's intervention. And I believe he listened to us. He answered our prayers. We, we got to a point where we didn't know what was going to happen anymore. We weren't sure which flights were really flying. <laughs> so we didn't know. And we, we are working on the timeline. So it, it was, I would say it was a difficult place to be, but he gave us strength. We were calm. We trusted him. And then we just believed that God, we have precedence with you. You will take care of us because at this point, there's nothing we can do. And truly, he has taken care of us. I feel taken care of. Yeah, not just in that everything he said, but even the piece at the end, I would add to it kind of, um, I, though I, I can't find the right word. The word that's in my mind is celebration, but not exactly that. You know, with the pandemic, we couldn't say proper goodbyes. We're not going to be able to say proper goodbyes to a right. lot of people because of everything that was going on. A lot of people went home and got stuck home, things like that. So things are not as usual, but at the tail end of our trip, we're going to have a chance to spend time with close friends. Yeah, right. So that's, uh, I'll label that number four. Right, exactly, <laughs> good. <laughs> Testimony number four. So in light of everything happening, we've been comforted. We've never been alone. We've had people checking up on us, us asking how they can be helpful to us and offering support in many ways. And we have friends in Shanghai, so our flight leaves from Shanghai to San Francisco and then San Francisco to Boston. But we don't live in Shanghai, so we're going to have to travel from our city to Shanghai. And our friends, good friends, family really, David and Cam have offered to just host us. And they are doing everything on our behalf. As we speak now, our hotel is booked and it's like a relaxation trip for us. And we haven't really done much traveling in all these four years of being in China and to experience that at the tail end of our stay here is just truly rest. And not just the two of us, but to be with another couple of friends that we, we like, that we love, that we haven't really had much time to spend with. It's just beautiful. It's like we have it 
it's just good. I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. I like the idea that we're gonna have to we are gonna, we're gonna have time to spend with David and Cam because we love them, and we didn't get the chance and the opportunity to grow our relationship, and we are also gonna you know explore China a little bit for the last before we leave, and. We're gonna rest before our flight because it's gonna be a long flight. So we're getting that what two days before the flight departs, and it's beautiful. Okay. It's nice. Three days. Yeah, we leave here on the twenty eighth, and we leave Shanghai on the twenty third. So this is the doing of the Lord, and as the word says, it's marvelous in our eyes. I mean, we didn't plan this. We didn't. They just offered to help us willingly. To just comfort us, and they have been so understanding. They've been with us. They keep David keeps telling us, "You know, you guys are going through a lot. I don't think you should do it. Just come." And they literally just <laughs> asked that we spend more than one day with them, just to you know calm down a little bit before we leave. And that makes me remember the story of you know Jesus. Uh, was it a Samaritans asking that he stays? With them for one more day, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a little while. Don't leave now, Lord. Stay with us. And I feel like, yeah, they're giving us that treat. Mm. Yeah. So it really comforts my heart. Yeah, and even though there are people who have been with us for so long here in Changchun that we won't be able to say proper goodbyes to, on another hand, it's kind of a blessing to get to say goodbye with them because. David is someone who we became very close to in this city, but he wasn't living here. He was kind of here for some time as he was doing research for his studies. Yeah, and his wife was not here at the time, so we didn't actually get to bond with her and and with them as a couple in mm-hmm. the way that we got to bond with him as our friend. So later on, they, you know, they're together now, but we didn't have a chance to spend time with them, and now we're gonna have that chance. And so it just makes it really sweet because I've been doing Bible study with his wife and participating in things with her, like from a distance, like on Zoom and on WeChat and on you know socials. So now to get to spend time with them in person, mm-hmm. you know, is gonna be just so meaningful, that much more meaningful to us. And not making any promises, but we hope even to have them on the podcast. Um, if we can yeah. squeeze them in while we're in Shanghai, it would be great to hear from them because they're another couple who, you know, are two foreigners in China from two different countries who got married here, and they have a testimony too. And this podcast is about the testimonies of, of God, so it would be an honor to have them on our show. We'll see if we can do it, but it would be very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and one more testimony. <laughs> I don't okay, know if there so are any more, down. but yeah, is it four or is it five? I can't, I lost track. You see, (laughs) praise God. So the last thing I was going to say is just that um, my school was going to pay for my flight. And as the tickets got more and more expensive, they couldn't pay the full price. And they gave me a number that they were going to pay. And it was a disappointing number. I mean, not unreasonable, but just not. I just wish that they would have paid the whole thing. Yeah. And... Well, even though I knew that they'd given me a particular number, when everything was said and done and I bought this final flight, I sent them the total that I spent, you know, in hopes that they would add a little to the number they gave me. Yeah. (laughs) And they did. They added to the number and they paid us today. They reimbursed us today. So that's good. We have the money in our hands to, on our, you know, in our travel back to America, we already have it. And it's more than what they originally agreed upon. So I really appreciate it. No, it's not the full amount, but again, it's you're more grateful when you recognize that, right. you know, it could have been one way and it's another way. And so yeah, what can I do but be grateful? Right. <laughs> you can only be grateful. I mean yeah. <laughs> and I am. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so. God. Yep. Wow. Anymore. <laughs> I feel like we could just go on and on. We we didn't even talk about, you know, uh, leaving and how we, we feel finally knowing that we this time we're leaving for real. And um I just I 
I want to talk about my Chinese friends. I have been loved so much and so well by my by my Chinese friends here. I've made some good, good, good friends here. Some Christians, some non-Christians, but they have been overwhelming in terms of loving me. And just recently we went out with one of them who was a fruit seller um, near where we live on, on our campus. And we made friends with him. And it's just the little ways through which God speaks to us, the people that God brings our way and how they're able to touch our lives in different ways that reveal the glory of God and the presence of God in our lives in moments, in um, times where you know, we, we don't expect things. We've been showered with love and I'm leaving China with that field in my heart. When I, when I think about China, I think about my Chinese friends. When I, even now as we are leaving, <laughs> most of them don't want us to leave. <laughs> we tell our friends we're leaving and they beg us, don't leave, stay. China is safe. You'll be good here. I, I give them so many excuses and they just quash all of them. One of my Chinese friends, I tell him, I'm a student. I just graduated. I need to leave. I need to go find work. He's like, you can find work here. And I'm like, my visa is almost expired. I can get you a visa in two days. <laughs> so it's, it's nothing but love. And to see, you know, God move in their lives like that really touches me. And it speaks a lot to me and it makes me humble. It makes me want to serve others more. I, I have been injected with um, service or servitude. I don't know which one would be right in this case, but the act of rendering service to men without you know, expecting anything in return, the kind of help and assistance they give us here they don't get anything from it. They just help us and they are happy helping us. And to see the smiles on their faces and the hearts behind their gestures, like Stella, all the friends we've made here. I have friends sending me messages on WeChat. I have friends telling me that, hey, they know flights are expensive. If I need any help, I, I can tell them and they can give me money. Like, look at this. They are not saying, I'm going to loan you money. Hey, if you need help, tell me. I'm going to contribute to your flight home. I don't want you to leave, but if you still want to leave, I wouldn't mind paying for you to leave. It melts my heart and it, it humbles me. As a Christian, it makes me want to do more for others. And not only people who can pay me back, just like the Bible says that we should extend our goodness, not only to people who can render us back what we gave them and so it's been a, an experience it's been a humbling experience and i i feel like i've been trained to go out there to leave china and go you know replicate the things that i've seen in them mm. mm -hmm. that's how i feel i feel like i have no re i owe people love now i'm indebted to people like i owe too many people They've shown me so much love that I, at this point, my deficit is so huge that I just want to be able to help people and I don't want anything back. And I pray that God gives us the strength to do that. And that's what I'm living with. That's what's buried deep within my heart. I look back to China, I think, be humble, be hardworking and serve in your humility. Testimony number six or number seven, I don't know. <laughs> <You lost count. laughs> um, speaking of the care of our friends, just to add to what you're saying, the fruit guy that you mentioned earlier, I can't I don't even know his name. I can only call him the fruit guy. I don't even know how he managed to have such a good friendship. He doesn't even speak a word of English. But I praise God for him. And he gave us medical masks. Right. You know, knowing that we were going back to America, he wanted us to be safe. And I thank God for him. And my friend Stella, our friend Stella, she mailed us from Shenzhen. Well, I don't know where the mask came from anyway, but she's in Shenzhen from and Shenzhen. she bought from a distance yeah. and 95 masks for us to travel through, you know, the airports and things on our way home. 
and for us to use on the plane and stuff like that. I'm sure we'll find masks along the way, maybe, but you'd be surprised. Like in places where they're requiring masks, if you don't have a mask, you just leave. They're not selling them at the door, you know. So in some cases, it's not that easy to find them when you need them. It's good to have them on you. And we have friends who just gave us, we have N95 masks, we have medical grade masks, we have what we need to <clears throat> travel. And it's funny because Thomas was saying we should probably bring some masks masks home. But in the end, in the grand scheme of all our packing and things, it just wasn't going to be something I think that yeah. we would have prioritized, um, knowing that we could probably get them home. But now we've got a bunch that we're going to be able to take home with us. And even share with people. We've been enraged yep. to also go and, you know, share with people. With the way things were going in the U.S., you remember when Crown and Audrey wanted us to even get masks from China. Mm -hmm. So it made me think, well, we can go home with some masks. And if we have families working in hospitals, medical workers and healthcare practitioners, so it would be a useful thing to have at home and also to be able to share with people. And then, bam, it's like our friends are like, you know your needs, <laughs> say no word, <laughs> take these and... Yeah, we are happy with the friends that God God has blessed us with here in China and what he's taught us through these friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, well, I have two things to say that are off topic. The first is that I realized that at some points I might be squinting because I usually, I typically wear glasses and I realized the last time we filmed a video that the glasses were reflecting the room and I, <laughs> you couldn't see my eyes. So I realized I might be squinting. And the second thing is I was using my phone, but I just wanted to say, I didn't mean to be rude, but I remembered that we usually start our podcast with a scripture, which we forgot to do. Yeah. So I was trying to think of a scripture about testifying the, of the goodness of the Lord. Did you find one? Uh, I found a couple, but I didn't, I wasn't convinced that any of them were the perfect one, but all scripture is great. <laughs> so <laughs> if, okay, the, if you have any in, in mind, they let's might go with it. I want to hear what you have. I mean, this is not what I have, but this is what I found. <laughs> so you have it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay well this one comes from psalm 66 verse 14 it says come in here all all you who fear god and i will declare what he has done for my soul in the version where i said i definitely did a keyword search i don't be knowing scriptures in my head like that all the time anyway <laughs> and in this in the version it, it had the word testimonies but it doesn't have it here but because i wanted something about testimonies and but nonetheless, you know, it's not just about the things he does, the little things he does here and there for us, um, like in this instance, in our preparations to go home. But ultimately, it's what he's done for our souls. It's what he's done in putting us back into right relationship with him and declaring us righteous and setting us on a path that leads to life and guiding us all along the way. So it's what he's done for our soul and it's what he's doing moment by moment to keep us on the path that leads to eternal life. So I bless the name of the Lord. And I pray that all of you who listen to our podcast recognize the importance and the power there is in knowing the Lord and walking with the Lord. And that's what I would encourage for everyone who's listening. And it says, come in here, all you who fear the Lord. Even if you don't fear the Lord, I would pray that you would fear the Lord. <laughs> And still hear the testimonies and let them, you know, make you reflect. He's worthy of our reverence, whether you, yes, you know, whether you recognize it or not. Yeah. So anyway. Well, that's a good scripture. I have made a fit. <laughs> 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 well, this has been another episode of Call to Marriage. We hope you've been blessed by this episode and until the next one. We love you. <laughs>